In the last video I made about fundamental analysis, I talked about the financial metrics of fundamental analysis, such as the trading volume and the likes. And in that video, I explained explicitly how you can use financial metrics to make analysis or to make research about a particular cryptocurrency asset you want to trade. And today in this video, I'm going to talk about on-chain metrics of fundamental analysis. I'm going to explain what on-chain metrics means, how it works and how you can do it. And also talk about the platforms on which you can do on-chain metrics of fundamental analysis whenever you want to make any research about any particular coin or particular crypto asset that you want to trade or invest in on a long-term basis. And you know that it is very important as a trader or as an investor to make sure you have done all the necessary research you need to do about a particular asset before you decide to invest in it because investing in an asset without being convinced that it's a good asset or it has a good uh, future or it's going to like give you a massive return probably in the future is something wrong so you, you must be sure that you have done all the necessary research before ever trying to invest in a crypto asset and that is why I have brought this video to you to give you enough value on on-chain metrics and how you can use it to make analysis, accurate analysis about your uh, trading or investing decision. So let's talk about on-chain analysis but before we do that, if you are just getting to see my channel, hit the subscribe button and click on the like button as well and if you are a returning viewer, you are welcome back, hit the like button so that a lot of people get to see this content and benefit from it. So let's go right into the video. So when we talk about on-chain metrics, you can also call it on-chain analysis. It is quite different from uh, technical analysis, but there are some things we call all on-chain indicators that you can use in both fundamental and technical analysis to make accurate trading decisions or form a very good trading and investment strategy. So now, what is on-chain analysis or on-chain metrics? On-chain metrics is the process of collecting data about a certain cryptocurrency project by looking at transaction history, hash rates, and other details. When you look at the transaction history of a particular asset, okay, how has how has have investors or traders been relating with the coin? How frequent have they been buying it? What is the hash rate? What is what are the active addresses that are active in that particular cryptocurrency market or that in the market of that particular cryptocurrency? Those are the things that we call on-chain data. And what do they do? What how they help is that you are able to see how busy that market is likely going to be how like frequent do investors buy that particular cryptocurrency asset and how active are the investors you get to see things like uh large volume transactions on the on-chain metrics analysis or on-chain metrics data you get to see large analysis large like large uh buying activities you get to see active addresses and you get to see large holders that's what i want to see large holders you see addresses that are holding a large percentage of that cryptocurrency asset and that helps you to know about supply mechanism and some other things that you need to know about on-chain analysis or on-chain metrics that is what on-chain metrics simply means it's like analysis you do or the process of collecting data that give you certain information about the particular cryptocurrency you are investing or you are researching about so that you know, get to know the transaction history of that cryptocurrency and when you know the transaction history you know how frequent people are buying it how frequent they are selling it you get to have a clue of how busy the market is and how that is likely going to affect the uh, productivity of that coin in the next few years so that is what on-chain analysis simply uh, depicts how does on-chain analysis work and how does it affect the market? I'm going to like uh, mention a few parts of on-chain analysis that you need to master and explain briefly how they work and how they affect the market of a particular cryptocurrency asset you are investing in. So now let's talk about something we call the total volume of crypto assets, like volume. You know we have volume in our financial metrics. We have something related to that in on-chain metrics too. Not directly volume. Not volume directly like 24 hours volume like we had in the last video. If you have not watched the last video where I talk about 
the financial methods of cryptocurrency asset, find the link to that video in the description below so that you get to understand the volume, 24 hour volume, as I mentioned it in that video, relating to the volume that I'm trying to like explain right in this video. So when I'm talking about volume here, it, it just simply means that things like supply distribution, active addresses, and other things I have mentioned earlier in this video, how are these things working related to the volume that we have when you are talking about the financial metric? So that's just uh, a bit of explanation about how volume relates to on-chain metrics. So now let's dive into the different categories of on-chain metrics that I'm going to mention in this video. The first thing I will mention about on-chain metrics when it comes to doing on-chain metrics of a particular cryptocurrency asset is the supply distribution of that asset. Supply distribution of that asset is very important because understanding the model of the supply of that cryptocurrency asset, such as the maximum supply, the total supply, stabilizing supply, can improve your trading decisions. Because some investors might consider a flexible supply distribution where coins producer produce over time. There are different supply uh, mechanisms. There are some supply mechanisms that you have coins produced over time. And there are some mechanisms that you have all the coins produced at once. So it depends on what you are looking for. But when you see that a, so the supply of a coin is produced over time, there is a probability of that asset having like a good chance of improving over time because people see that the supply is growing and they want to like get into that crypto asset. So sometimes you have some crypto assets that have their supply fixed and the supply distribution might, might be unfavorable to uh, investors in the long run. So the two also reflect it if a coin significantly prioritize early adopters more than the new investors. And that is this thing is very important. When you see that the distribution of your coin favors the early investors, the people that adopted that crypto asset earlier than people that are going to adopt it later, then is a project that you would not like to invest in because only the early investors will likely going to be able to profit massively from that asset. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm establishing a company and in that company, I try to, to sell about 60% shares. When the moment I like uh, start the company, I, I try to sell about 60% of the shares out that very moment that I start the company. Now, the supply will favor the early investor because they are large. The majority of the shares have been sold out and it is large. Those people that come later might just be buying like 2%, 3%, 5%. And they might not get enough profit from the company in the future because it might reach a stage in the company where they would have reached a maximum or the peak of that company. And the early investors might decide to like remove their investment because at that point, they have made a lot of money. So the late investors might not make a lot of money from it because of the kind of supply distribution that company is based on. I hope you understand that. So supply distribution of a company is very important because if, a, if the supply distribution favors the early investors much more than the late investors, it might be a red flag for someone like me or you to invest in. So that is that about understanding the supply distribution of a crypto asset when you are doing on-chain analysis. So now, another thing you would like to make research about when we are talking about on-chain metrics of a crypto asset is the active addresses. As I said to be active, as soon as it becomes a direct participant in the market, that means that that address receives a transaction or sends a transaction. It doesn't matter whether the address is receiving a transaction or sending out a transaction. What matters is that the address is active. And how do you know that it's active? Maybe it receives a transaction. Let's say you are making a search of Bitcoin, for example. And we can say active addresses on the, block, on the Bitcoin blockchain data are the addresses that have received Bitcoin or sent Bitcoin. It's as simple as that. Active addresses are on the blockchain. And they are addresses that become active after a successful transaction has occurred over a certain period. Period also matters when you are looking at active addresses because 
let's say an address has not done anything let's say a bitcoin address for example has not sent or received any bitcoin since 2010 we may not want to categorize that address as an active address because there has been, it might be lost the owner might have died or lost his private keys so we would not want to categorize that particular address as an active address so active addresses are things you can access using the on-chain methods and looking at the active address of a particular asset might give you insight on how busy like i said in the beginning of this video how busy that asset is and how well people are transacting that particular crypto asset and that is going to give you a good way of evaluating how well that asset is going to perform in the nearest future another on-chain metric that you would like to look into when you are making a research about a particular coin is buying and selling of that asset how easy is buying and selling of that asset how are people buying it how are people selling it and that leads you to another thing which is realized profit and losses you know when you are using an exchange like Binance or any other exchange you see something like PNL that is profit and losses so when you trade a, a, a certain uh, asset over a time or when you buy a crypto asset with your fiat currency you are definitely going to due to the fluctuation of the price of the market you are going to have something on your wallet or exchange something like PNL which is the profit or loss you have realized from trading or from buying or holding that particular asset so realized profits and losses are floating profits and losses achieved after selling a cryptocurrency so as soon as you buy an asset with a fiat currency there will be profit or loss due to the price movement yes there will be profit or losses that you have acquired or incurred if it's, it's a loss due to the movement of the price so realized profit and losses are determined by comparing the amount realized and the realized income that means you are going to like look at how much fiat currency or even cryptocurrency you used to buy that asset let's say you are buying that asset with a stable coin like usdt or usdc okay how many dollar increase have i been able to like get from this asset so that is how you get uh pnl which is realized profit or loss so trying to understand how or trying to make research into realize profit and losses of traders and investors in a particular coin or in a market helps you determine how good that asset is. But like I said in the previous video, when I was talking about uh, financial metrics, you are not only going to use all these metrics alone. You are going to combine them with financial metrics and all other metrics in that you can find in that asset before you can be able to determine whether it is an asset you would want to invest in or not so now let's talk about tools you can use for to analyze all these things because when i'm talking about active address and things like that there must be some places where you can get all those things if you are enjoying this video hit the like button and click on the subscribe button if you are not subscribed to the channel so that you get to see content i post about cryptocurrency business and lifestyle hit that do that so right now one two three four five good let's continue so now let me give you some sites or some platforms where you can get enough data enough information about all the things all the on-chain metrics i have mentioned earlier in this video the first one i would recommend is just a recommendation actually because i have used them and i have seen how good how good the information provided on this platform are the first one is glassnode glassnode.com you can see that on the screen right now glassnode.com so glassnode provides on-chain metrics of cryptocurrency assets and on that platform you can get as much information as possible and most times the most, most especially is a paid platform where you subscribe to a plan to get enough information about the cryptocurrency asset on-chain data of cryptocurrency assets you would want to invest in the next platform i would like to mention is dune d-u-n-e as you can see on the screen that's that's a wonderful platform you can use to get on-chain data of cryptocurrency another platform is messari messari is a very brilliant platform that i have used several times on doing on-chain uh, analysis of some particular crypto asset that i invested in 
And one another one I would like to mention is CryptoCons. And there is a platform on Telegram that are called CryptoCons Alert. What CryptoCons Alert does is that they send alert of large transactions that are being moved into exchanges. Let's say, for example, a whale has like let's say uh, fifty million dollars worth of Bitcoin in his, in his address, and he decides to send it from his from his wallet to an exchange. You know, I explained in one of my videos that wallet is usually where you keep your coins, and exchange is where you do trading and buying and selling activities. If you don't understand that what that means, you are going to find a link to that video in the description below. So do well by watching that video to understand the difference between a wallet and exchange and how you can use both. So back to what I was saying about crypto coin alert. This particular platform gives you alert of movement of coins, large amount of coin from wallets to exchanges. And what does that mean? That means that when coins are being moved from wallet to an exchange, it indicates selling activity. So it means that, that those whales are likely going to sell their coin. So CryptoCoin Alert is one of the best platforms I have used and I use daily. Almost every time I get alert from them on Telegram. So CryptoCoin is a company that gives good on-chain analysis about that you can use uh, to do analysis about crypto assets you would want to invest in. So if you got value from this video, like I said earlier, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. And in the next video, I'm going to be talking about project metrics. So be in the lookout for that. See you.